I'm going to make sure I record this so you guys can watch it later on. And then also those who couldn't stay for the whole thing or, or maybe you're, you know, coming in a little late, you'll have the recording. Um, I want to make sure that everyone can hear me. So I'm going to move to the chat. Hold on one second. Um, if you can hear me, can you press one or say yes or whatever it is just so I can make sure everyone can hear me? Okay, cool. I'm seeing some yeses. All right, so I'm going to give maybe about two or three minutes um, and then we will get started. I'm going to go through a really, really quick demo um, because a lot of people have seen the app or use the app and then also we have a lot of videos on our YouTube and then I'm going to talk about um, just some of the new features and the reasons why um, you, you should get the mobile app for 2018. All right, so I'm going to place myself on mute right now, and then I will be back in a few minutes to get started. Okay, so I am giving um, I'm giving people a few more minutes. I have some questions. Ryan Knoll says, if I want to share this webinar with someone, what is the link I should send them? Uh, like if they want to jump on right now. Um, I actually do not know. You can send them to sign up at um, www.launch.com slash mobile webinar. And if they sign up there, they should be able to uh, pull up the link immediately. Um, so let me know if that helps, Ryan. Um, all right, so I'm going to share my screen shortly, um, and then we will get started. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen, um, and I'm going to I'm going to ask uh, if you all can see my screen. I'm going to pull everything up, um, and then we will 
get everything started. Give me one second to share my screen. Okay, let's see. Is going to work for me today? Um, I believe you should be able to see my screen. Give me one second. Uh, let me know if you guys can see my screen. You sh it should be popping up shortly. Can you see my screen? Let's see. Okay. Um, all right, I'm pulling up the screen now. It says it's sharing. Okay, can everybody see my screen now? If you can, please say yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna get started, um, and we're gonna I'm gonna give you five quick reasons you need the Launch 27 mobile app. And like I said, I will show you a quick demo, um, and then I will also answer any questions at the end. Um, so let's get started. Um, so you know, it's 2018. You know, 2017. You may have been ramping up, building your business. You weren't sure if you were ready to have the mobile app. Um, I understand that completely because it was actually my first full year in business. Um, and when we started to kind of get busy, and you know, especially in the holiday seasons, I realized that I needed something to. And I've been using the mobile app, of course, for about a year now. But I realized just how much. Um, I needed it during the holiday season um, as we're getting busier and as people are booking, you know, more frequently or they need last minute appointments and I have to make my make sure I know where my teams are at all times. Um, getting the mobile app was something that or having the mobile app was something that um, was basically irreplaceable for me during this holiday season. Um, let's see. Okay. So, like I said, one of the main reasons is the improved efficiency. Um, now, I'm going to, a lot of times I use EnjoyMades because that's my company as an example. Um, but for example, we just won a contract uh, with a turnover company. And one of those things that we have to do with the turnover company is we have to, we have a checklist of items that have to get done. So with this specific company and their Airbnbs, um, with this specific company, we create and assign custom checklists for them. Um, so no longer do my teams have to call me up and say, okay, um, what do we have to do at this appointment? They can just pull up the checklist, which is automatically assigned um, once I create it for that customer um, and see everything that needs to get done. Um, also, there is the duration, um, which is on the um, notes that the, the team will see. So they know that they have two hours to go ahead and um, get that turnover done. Um, so that's been helpful in improving efficiency. That I don't have to send them emails the night before, or even if one of my team members is out and I have to have another team member step in that's not um, completely familiar with a home, they have that custom checklist that they can follow. Um, they also have notes and, and comments from previous appointments that they can follow. Um, one of the uh, great things about creating and assigning custom checklist is, again, if you have a customer that, for example, says, you know, um, make sure you uh, clean, you know, behind the the, the mirror or whatever the case is. Your team, when they check that off, you know if a customer comes to you and says, well, you know, I told you that I needed this specific thing clean, you know if the team checks that off that it either A, should be clean or B, 
um, you need to talk to the team member about making sure the items that they say are getting done are actually getting done. Um, so that's one thing in my business and in other businesses I've seen improve efficiency. Um, and then the next thing is, and I kind of touched on this, is you're able, the teams are able to see appointment details, notes, and comments. And comments are a relatively new thing for um, Launch 27, but they're pretty cool because you can now leave comments at the end of a booking, or your your team can leave comments. And so how I've seen that that has worked really nicely for us is our, the team will check in, they'll see their appointment details, or maybe they'll look at their appointment details the night before, and that's you know, obviously ideal. They'll look at the detail uh, the night before so they know if they need to get specific items or um, if they need to stop by the office or, or whatever to have those specific items on hand. Um, then when they get to the appointment, if there's some notes that we've entered into um, Launch 27, so say my manager um, spoke to the customer and the customer only wants eco-friendly products. So when the team pulls up those notes, when they've checked into the appointment, it pops those notes up and says, make sure you only use eco-friendly products. And that's helpful because oftentimes teams will not have those notes right in front of them. And on the mobile app, they actually have to click, okay, I have viewed these notes in order to proceed to get started with the appointment. So you know that they're seeing these notes and again, it, it helps. Um, increase that efficiency where you don't have to remind them or send them an email or you know it doesn't maybe it won't happen at all because the team isn't aware of it um, and then also for comments comments are really nice because at the end of the appointment or during the appointment wherever whenever a team can leave comments right in their mobile app so maybe um, the they um, couldn't clean a certain room because the dog was in there and the dog was growling um, a team member can leave those comments about that specific booking. Um, so notes are more of a global, uh, you know, maybe it's like the client only wants eco-friendly products and you know for every um, time you go to that appointment, that note is there. It, you know that the client only wants eco-friendly products. Um, but then for comments, it, the comments are related to a specific booking. So, you know, a, a, um, a comment may be, we didn't get to clean the laundry room or, um, we threw out, um, you know, spoiled food or whatever have you. Um, those comments are specific to that appointment. And that just helps you keep, uh, you know, keep notes and comments on what has gone on and what appointment and then also the overall, you know, note about the customer. Um, know when your team is on their way, when the job is in progress, and when the job is complete. Um, so this is a big thing with the Launch 27 mobile app that has actually saved a lot of people, um, and myself included. A lot of my appointments start at 8 a.m. Um, a lot of my appointments start at 8 a.m. and, you know, say I'm getting ready to get my day started. If I know my team has checked in at 7.30, I know that it's going to be a smooth start to the day. I won't, um, I won't have to worry about um, calling the customer, you know, you know, calling them before they're off to work or, or calling the cleaner and finding out where they are. I know my, that my team is on their way. And then also during the middle of the day when I have, um, when I, you know, when the when my team is finishing up a job and a customer calls and we have that window of time and they're like, okay, where where will, is my team? I can let them know my team just checked out. I can see that they are about 25 minutes away, and that just helps the client know and also me know and not have to play phone tag and have to figure out where everyone else is. I can just pull that up on my phone. Um, another thing that I love is one app to chat in real time. So a lot of people use um, a lot of people use different apps to chat with their team members. And I used to use text messages. And one, I don't want my team members texting me. Um, you know, during the day, I prefer to keep those messages separate. I don't want to have to scroll through my personal messages to find my team's text. Um, so we have chat right in the mobile app. Um, and it's a real-time chat. It's much like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger where you can see when a team member has read the chat. Um, you can see when the team member um, is has responded in real time. Um, and all of that's helpful because you don't have to, you know, ask them to use 
two separate apps. Um, all of that can be done within the app. Another thing is uh, that has really helped me with efficiency is um, group messages and that's a new thing that's in the mobile app. You can now create these group messages where um, instead of emailing your team saying you know um, make sure you're there for the team meeting at 8 a.m. on um, Friday now you can just send a group message and everybody can communicate and you have those group messages um, right there and you can see who's read it and you know it could be a team-wide group message which I like to do for special events um, you know if we have something coming up or it could be maybe you have assigned two separate teams to one cleaning you can create a group message for, specifically for them so that you can communicate with everybody in one thread um, and that's just really helpful when you want to disseminate a message quickly you know and easily in, in one app it's hard enough to get cleaners um, to use one app let alone get them to use multiple apps so we've found that moving the chat into the app um, and making it mandatory has really helped in, in terms of adoption and making sure people are using it to its full, fullest capabilities. Um, another new thing that has helped improve efficiency immensely is allowing teams to call without seeing the customer's phone number. Now, some people do not mind if customers, um, some people don't mind if their customers and their team members have um, each other's phone numbers and if that's the case you can turn this feature off um, if you don't want your teams to call customers at all if you want to be the one to handle um, calling with the customers that's that's your choice as well for me I found that it wasn't great um, for my team members to have customers numbers because unfortunately that can lead to team members calling up and offering their services and and other things that just or team members communicating inappropriately or when they're not supposed to communicate with with customers so we decided that we want to add call masking and call masking um, is very similar to what an uber uses or handy uses or um, pretty much any of the big on-demand um, platforms nowadays use call masking and what it is is it allows teams it allows you to set your settings where teams can call the customers um, and basically all they see is the um, the they'll see that it's connected they won't see the customer's phone number the customer gets a phone number it's not um, it is not right now we can't set specific numbers but it's not the cleaners number so you don't have to worry about that um, you know if a cleaner decides that they want to go ahead and call the client um, you know on their off time or I one of the things that had ha that happened to me was I fired a cleaner and she before I had call masking she went back through her email and ended up calling all of my previous clients so this is a great way to um, eliminate that um, so the next reason is and like I said at, at the end I will demo um, the app but right now I'm just going through some points um, and I will give a quick demo at the end so I see that question um, the next reason is to improve customer experience. Um, one thing that customers love, and especially our regular customers, I mean, this might not be for your one-off customers, but for your customers who are regular customers or customers who aren't home when um, you're there, um, is when they have the app, they can know when your their team is on, on the way. Um, what will happen is they will get a notification and right now it's an in-app notification we are thinking about uh, enabling SMS notifications if they don't have the app but if they do have the app they'll get an in-app notification or a push notification saying your team's on their way um, when their team is checked in they'll know that the team is in their house um, and then when the, when the job is complete they'll know that the job is complete and that just give, gives customers peace of mind um, combine that with the online booking you seem like a very savvy um, uh, savvy uh, company that has it all together and I've actually won jobs based on the fact that we have this tool um, people love the fact that you know they may not be home but they'll know you know who's in their house when they're in their house um, so it's one of my you know perks when I'm trying to win a job especially with um, the these turnover cleanings that I just started to do um, I mentioned this and this is seen as a perk because people like to know that um, basically that there is um, you know accountability and also just they will feel taken care of and it also just looks really good it makes your company seem tech savvy 
Um, the the mobile app also allows customers to book, pay, and manage um, their appointments and, and their teams right from their mobile phone. Um, and, and rate teams right from their mobile phone. And this means that they don't have to, you know, as soon as the job is done or if they're out and, you know, say, you know, this is something that's happened to me a million times. My mom decides she wants to stop in and I want to get my house cleaned. I can schedule that right from my mobile app um, without having to make sure I'm at a desktop. And, you know, you always have your phone with you. So it's one of those things that allows for you to, for you to, um, for you to do, for you to do that easily. Um, and then also, they um, you can create, and we talked about this before, you can create specific checklists for um, specific customers that are automatically assigned. And again, I mentioned this earlier, but if you have a customer that's particularly picky or a customer that you, you know, want to make sure every detail is taken care of, you can create those specific checklists for that customer um, and they can see those checklists, know that they have everything checked off um, and it just improves their experience. And then also one of the things that a lot of customers and a lot of the businesses on Lunch 27 love is giving them access to your own custom uh, white label app. So if they, if you don't have the white label app, currently they can download the Launch 27 app, find your company, and use the app that way. Um, but if you want to improve the customer experience, we always suggest creating a custom app. Um, and with that custom app, you now have an app in the App Store, um, and customers can just look for you whether they're using the Apple their Apple phone um, or their Android phone and it's it's also um, in the Windows Store and Blackberry although we really haven't had very many people um, use Windows or Blackberry but the main ones are Apple and, and Android and they are able to go ahead and find you right in the Android Store all right so those were the four reasons, and the last reason is we have some new specials. So maybe you aren't on the Plus Plan. Um, I believe that Launch 27 will be announcing the ability to get the mobile app as an add-on. Um, and so, you know, whether you want to upgrade to the Plus Plan or you have the Pro Plan and you want to add the mobile app as an add-on, um, we will be, be debuting the ability to get an add-on, um, get the mobile app as an add-on. Um, and then also for the rest of 2017, we are, um, so the white label currently, it's $199 to get for the design fee. And basically a designer helps you create a custom app for your business. And as you can see, here's two examples here. Um, there's a number of companies that have um, their custom apps and basically they help you create the icon, um, the screens, and then your custom app is your custom colors. You will have um, the description which is great both for SEO um, and it's also great for um, just an upsell. I've had actually had customers who have searched for certain things. Um, we use certain tags and you know if a customer is maybe looking for handy but then your tag comes up they've downloaded the app and booked an appointment um, through it. So the white label app um, is we're, for the rest of 2017 we are discounting it to, for um, a $99 down payment and then $50 per month and that will lock you in at that price. I believe in 2018 it will be back to $199 down payment and then $79 per month. So if that's something you're interested in, um, definitely suggest doing that before the new year. Um, and again, how that process works is our designer works with you um, to create your screens and they'll basically you'll answer some questions and we can send you that form um, to answer those questions. Um, you will send the logo, they'll create those screens, and then um, we will get it approved in the Apple and Android store, and then you can share those um, share those, uh, share those special links with your customers. Um, and also, as part of the specials, we're giving away um, badges for your website, as well as videos for your team. So all of those come with the white label app. Um, and so a lot of people right now are asking where we sign up for the custom app. At the end, I will send out a link for that, um, and you can go ahead and sign up for that. I'm going to now do a demo because I was asked um, if we were going to have a demo. 
And let me connect um, to that screen. Um, and while I'm connecting to that, I can start answering a few questions if you have them. Um, let's see. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second so I can pull up the mobile app, uh, mobile app on my phone and I'm going to answer questions while I, while I do that. Um, so let's see. Um, a number of questions where there will be a live demo. Yes, I'm about to do the demo now. Um, how do I get a white label app? Again, I will send out the link for that. Um, is a white label app for customers or employees? So it's for both. So there's two apps, um, and you're gonna. So you're gonna download as an admin. You're gonna download the admin app, and that's the Launch 27 admin app because the admin admins don't necessarily need a custom app. Um, but your customers and your employees are gonna download your white label app. Um, and just depending on their logins, um, it will show them different portals. So, for example, um, if your customers already have a Launch 27 login where they use the on the main um, web app, they'll just use that same information to log into your white label app. Um, and same for employees. One thing with the employees is they have to verify their account. So when I say verify, um, the, when they have to create their password and email address and, and all, all of that before you can actually assign them appointments. Um, what's the best resource for learning how to market the app? So I've done a few um, I've done a few posts on that, but I'm actually um, writing a larger post on how to market um, your your white label app because like I said, for me, just having the app, and of course, you know, I'm the cobbler with no shoes. I don't have a white label app for my business yet because we've been so busy rolling them out for other businesses. But just the fact that I have the app at all, I have um, won a number of jobs because people just love the idea. You know, everything nowadays in your home is a smart home. So people want more technology rather than less technology, um, I've found. And I've won a lot of um, different jobs using the app and, and promoting it. Okay, um, one question is, what if I'm an admin and I'm also on the job? Do I need two email addresses and apps? I Yes, so you will because there's two different logins. Just like for the web app, you you know wouldn't log in with your admin app if you're also an employee. So what I do is I have two different emails and, and I log in, um, and I just did this today. I logged in as an example to um, kind of show, you know, I logged in as my team email address to show um, how time tracking works and then I logged in with my admin address to see you know the time tracking um, so give me one second I'm gonna try and pull it up now and you guys can keep asking questions if you have them while I pull it up um, is there an onboarding process for the team so yes there is an onboarding process um, and if you get the custom white label app um, you'll get a custom video um, that will help teams on board. Um, but we also have videos on the Launch 27 mobile app playlist, and we have a guide that I will be putting up after this as well. All right. Okay. Um, give me one second. I'm just pulling up my phone so we can do a quick demo. Uh, give me one second. And if sometimes my computer, I have one of those new MacBooks, it's a little finicky because it has no connectors. So if I'm unable to do a demo live for you, I will make sure I do a demo now and I, um, and I can send the demo out so that everyone can have access to that. 
but I'm trying to do a demo um, now so that if there's any questions, I can answer them live. All right, should be coming up now. Okay, perfect. So I have it now. All right, give me one second and then I will ask you if you can see my screen. Just give me one second. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Let me know if you can see. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm going to pull up the um, admin app first, and I'm just going to give you a quick tour of everything. Um, now, this is just a test account, so you're not going to see actual colors, but if you, whether you have the Launch 27 app or White Label app, you can um, create custom colors. Um, and to do that, what you would do is you would go into your web app, go into general settings, and just like you set the colors for your web app, you can set that for your Launch 27 app, right? Right, as well. So, or the mobile app. So once you set it for the web app, it will also set for the mobile app. Um, so we have this interesting yellow set, um, but. Yeah, so that's one of the things when you when when you arrive, it kind of greets you by name. Um, then you also see your company colors. Um, so this is the home screen, and the home screen is kind of your um, I, I call it kind of your dashboard, I guess, for your day. Um, you log in, you see the time, you see you have eight bookings for today. Um, now I can see right now I have one person checked in, I have two people checked out. Um, if I had someone on their way to an appointment, there would be a notification there. Um, if I had some messages, there would be a notification here. Um, if I had a team running late, there would be a notification here, and I could click on that. I could see why they're running late, and I can show you how that works once we get into the team app. And then charges as well. We'll look into that. Um, but first, let's go to this button here. I'll show you how to create checklists. Um, to create checklists, you'll click on checklist, and here's all of my different checklists. Um, and say I want to create a new one, I click the plus sign. I can name my checklist, I'll name it whatever I want to name it. If you have multi location, um, you can add the location there. And then you can look through your services um, and assign a service. You don't have to assign a service, so if you don't want to. Um, have this assigned to a specific service, you can leave that blank. And what I mean by that is if I create this checklist and it's called one bedroom move in, move out clean, whenever I whenever there's a new appointment that's one bedroom move in, move out clean, it will automatically assign that list if I have this created. Um, now if I don't want to do that, let's see, if I wanted to assign it to a customer, a specific customer, I could do that. Um, so maybe I want to assign it to myself. Um, and now every time I, um, I book a move in, move out clean, um, it's going to be automatically assigned. Now if I want to add a new task, I can do that here. And we'll add kitchen task. And a lot of people have said, you know, we want the ability to add um, these in the web app. And that is coming very soon, just like we recently rolled out time logs. and. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show you those on the web app. Um, we are working on the ability to add checklists inside the web app as well. Um, but basically if I want to add a task, um, a subtask, and maybe my subtask is clean sync, I can do that. And you can create checklists and add as many subtasks and uh, regular tasks as you need. Um, and as you can see it says I've created one subtask. Um, and I'll click save. I didn't name my list, so it's not going to allow me to save it. But um, also, I'm sorry, I didn't show you this. Um, you can put your allotted time in there as well. So if a move in, move out clean takes five hours um, for one person, you would put that in. And then adding tags. And tags just help you if you need to search for the list. So maybe I want to search for the list later. Um, I would add a tag there. 
So that is how you add checklists. Um, we're going to go back here. Um, adding customers. Adding customers is very similar to how you would add a customer in the web app. Um, and all your customers, of course, from the web app, you'll find them here. Um, you can search for them. Let's see, I'll search my name. And that will pull up me. Um, and as you can see, the check uh, marks here mean I'm verified. So I've logged in with this account. Um, you see the same tags as you'd see in the web app. Um, and then if I want to go there, I can click book now. So if I want to create an appointment for myself really quickly, I could do that here. Um, if I wanted to um, view my profile, I could do that there. And it's going to pull up the information. It's the first time I'm loading it, so it's going to load a little bit slowly. Um, but it will show me all my past bookings. It will show past notes um, and the billing information. And then if I want to edit, I can edit it here. And let's see, if I want to pull up another person, if I want to manage addresses, so say they have multiple addresses, um, like if it's a real estate office, I can do that there. Um, if I want to call, I can call here and then send an email. You can send an email with that. Um, and adding teams is very similar. Again, all your teams are going to be right here. You're going to have your active teams and then your archive teams. And those are just old teams that you don't have active anymore. Um, you can only assign a um, appointment to them in the mobile app if they have this check mark next to them. So some people will say to us, oh, we, you know, tried to assign a team and we didn't see it there. It's because your team have, has not yet created an account. Um, you can create your teams here. Um, you can add them from your contacts. I'm not going to do that, but you can add them from your contacts. So say you have them in your phone, you can do that. Or you can just create them here and it creates them both in your mobile app and also your web app. Um, call masking is another thing you can set up. Now with call masking you have to buy credit um, because we use a third party um, uh, service to call. Um, so basically what you would do is it, it, you would turn this on here. Um, you would purchase the credit and I can give you more details for that um, after the webinar because right off the top of my head I can't remember the exact amount of minutes you get for the exact amount of money. I'm sorry about that, but I will send you that. Um, but basically, you purchase those credits, and then your teams, if you have it set up in your web app, and there's a setting in your, in your web app that allows your teams to call without seeing the phone number. Um, if you have that set up and you purchase credits, when your team goes to make a phone call for an appointment, they will just see a connecting screen. They won't necessarily see the phone number. Um, and then you can also monitor all the calls that have been made right here. Um, and you'll be able to see, you know, who's called who. And you can, of course, filter those as well. Um, so that is call masking. And again, it is very helpful when you have um, when you have teams, contractors, maybe you don't want to give them the information. Or, like I said, for me, it was, you know, it was when I found out my team member who I'd fired um, was calling all my old clients, call masking would have kind of saved that. Um, settings. Now, settings, you can change your address. Um, you can change your password, much like on, um, you know, the web app. And again, when you do that, anything you do in your mobile app, it's going to reflect on your web app. So if you change your password in the mobile app, um, it will change it on the web app. Um, and then preferences is pretty cool. Um, preferences is where you can um, manage your notifications. Um, you know, if you don't want to get a million notifications, you can turn those off. Um, but there's some pretty cool ones like um, maybe you don't want to get, or maybe you don't want to allow your customers to view checklists, so you can turn that off. Um, maybe you don't want your teams to be able to log time manually, and what that means is if a team, um, maybe they forgot to check in or out, um, you can, um, you can re, you can, um, turn that off. So basically, what time they report is the time that's reported. Um, you can turn off the ability for teams to chat with each other. Um, and then also you can set an alert um, if the teamwork hours exceed. So, for example, if um, your duration of your appointment is two hours and the, a team hasn't checked out and they've now been there for two hours and 45 minutes, um, you can set that to send you a push notification saying, 
hey, um, the team has been there uh, for two hours and 45 minutes, you might want to check in with them because not only are they going to be late, but now they're costing you money or what have you. So you can set that up. Um, you can alert, you, you can have yourself alerted if a team work hours exceeds the duration by uh, whatever number of minutes that you want to check. Um, and then maximum check-in distance, and this is one of the features um, that can be helpful, and it's interesting because we've had a number of Launch 27 companies, unfortunately, catch their cleaners checking in and checking out at locations that weren't the appointment. Um, and I can show you an example of what that looks like and how you can tell, but basically, um, if you don't want your team members checking in from their bed, um, you can start the maximum, you can set the maximum check-in distance. So, you know, if you're suspecting that a team might not actually be at the appointment and there's a way you can verify it, um, but if you, um, if you assume that there might, might not be checking in at, at the right place, you can set that check-in distance. Um, or you can just allow them to check in wherever. Um, or you can set it one fourth mile, one half mile, or one mile. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back to the app. All right, so back to your home screen. Um, when you click it, check in teams, you can see who's checked in. Um, so team Elvis has been working for nine hours. Um, and if you click here, and this actually isn't, unfortunately, I'm going to show you a better example because this is just a test booking. It's in Colorado and we are not in Colorado, so you can't see it. But if you looked, if, if I'm going to pull up a more accurate booking and you'll be able to see, let's see if we can see it on my checkout. Um, so I logged two hours and 30 minutes here. Um, and this is actually in Brooklyn where I am. But again, I wasn't actually... I wasn't actually in the location when I checked in and checked out, so I might not be able to give a good example of the, yeah, I can't give a good example because I actually was not in the location when I checked in and checked out. But essentially, what happens is when a team has checked in, let's see if this is, gives a good example. All of these are test booking, so they're not the most accurate. But when a team has checked in, um, it's going to show you a door here, a yellow door, and it shows you the location where they've checked in. Um, and because we are just using this as a test account, you really, it, you, you know, since we're not in Colorado, it's not accurate. But if, they, if the team is using it and they have checked in maybe five miles away, you can actually see on the map where they've checked in or where they've checked out. And I, like I said, I've caught a number of teams checking in, you know, maybe um, 20 minutes after they should have checked out or, or checking out 20 minutes after they've checked out. And we actually had a Launch 27 customer who caught her team checking in and out at the local mall. Um, so seeing it actually on the map as well as getting those alerts can help crack down on people who may not be checking in and checking out right at the location that they should be. Um, so let's see. Now we're going to go to view bookings. Um, give me one second. We're going to go to view bookings. Um, so these are your bookings for the day. You can um, filter them. So any new booking and a new booking would just be a booking that's not assigned. And as you can see, all mine are assigned. You can look at all the assigned bookings and then you can look at all the completed bookings. One thing I absolutely love is the ability to um, the ability to see my total revenue and total bookings, you know, just in a in a blink. I love being able to kind of look at that immediately, um, see that what that is for the day, and then also um, if you go back to past appointments. And again, since this is a test one, I don't really have appointments rated, but I also love to be able to flip through and see the ratings. Um, let's see. Um, so these are my appointments for the day, and when we go over to the team app quickly, I will show you what it looks like when somebody's checking in and checking out. But for you, um, if you want to look at an appointment, you can click here. Now you can do a number of things. When you click on the appointment, you can assign a team. Um, so I can assign a team, and it tells you, you know, their availability, and again, that's based on Launch 27 um, settings. I can add a checklist, and as you can see, customer checklist was already selected because it's set up um, in, in our back end to automatically assign. 
and then I can see my team share. Now I don't pay my teams a percentage, so it doesn't reflect um, the percentages. But if you do t pay your teams a percentage, you'll see the breakdown of the share right there. And then you can go ahead and, and assign it, and that will assign it to the person that you've assigned it to. And these were already assigned, so um, it's not going to show you a different thing because I didn't reassign it. But basically, I, it's been assigned to Team Elvis. Um, you can assign a checklist, and again, if you know, we've already signed a checklist, but if you wanted to change the checklist, you could do that there. Um, if you use the invite feature, um, that's a new feature that Launch 27 has rolled out, you could use, you could click that. Um, and again, you have to have that enabled on your Launch 27 web account. And what that does is you invite teams to a booking. So for example, um, you know, if it's a carpet cleaning job and you have three teams that do carpet cleaning, you can send them an invitation. They will get the request and then they can go ahead and uh, let you know that they're available. Now, I don't use this for uh, my employees, but I actually do have contractors. When I have a day that's super busy and I don't have employees that can cover it, I have contractors, and this is just an easy way without me having to call them and go back and forth or send an email. This is an easy way for them to pick up the phone and say, oh, yeah, I have availability. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and accept that job. Um, so that is a feature that I like to use with my contractors. Um, you can edit a booking. Um, so say I want to change this, you know, you can go in and change, change the booking, um, click save, you can edit payment methods, um, you can add a card, um, you can, we have all different payment types here, but it, uh, it depends on whatever payment type that you have set up in your Launch 27 account. So if you only accept um, debit cards, you're only going to, um, you're only going to see the debit card and, you know, you can scan the card, um, with your phone or you can enter it manually. Um, and then you can see, you know, final price here. Um, you've got your services, you've got your discounts, all of that there. So you can put your discount code in there. Um, you can do a price adjustment just like on the web app. All right, and um, let's see, other things are cancel booking. Again, just like the web app or cancel the booking with fee. Um, you can check the progress of the job. You can show details. You can get directions, which is really helpful for me if I want to see how far certain booking is from, you know, a team's um, earlier booking. And then you can put the charge on hold or you can charge the booking. Um, and I will show you more about more of that in a second. Um, logs. So again, logs are now in your Launch 27 account. Um, and I will quickly show you where they are in the Launch 27 account. So you can, um, you can now look in your Launch 27 account to get your logs or you can get them here. Um, what you can see here is it, it calculates your mileage, how many jobs and how many work hours. Um, you can click here and here you can see um, the details or where they've checked in and out. And again, we're not in Colorado, so it's not going to be super helpful because it's a test account. But if it was, you know, an actual account, you'd be able to see, you know, where the booking was, um, where the check-in and check-out was um, right on the screen. Um, you can see um, the summary. If they've attached any pictures, you'll be able to click this and you'll see pictures. Um, you can adjust the time. So, for example, if a team forgot to clock out, you can adjust the time for them um, and make sure your time logs are accurate. And then you can also approve a time log. And you can, again, do this in your mobile phone, and now you can also do that through the Launch 27 web app as well. Um, one thing I use a lot is the ability to filter. So if I want to see all jobs by me done in, you know, this week, I can click Apply Filter and then the logs will come up. And I've only had one job, again, because this is a test account. Um, so that's one of the things I really love. And I actually also, uh, speaking of filtering, I love to filter and see, like, you know, I can choose a customer, and I can filter and see, you know, what, how much money they've spent, you know, on certain dates. Or also, I like to see teams, how much money they brought in in certain dates. So you can use those filters to... Um, to do that, let's see. So charges again. Charges are very similar um, to on the web to the web app. You can filter through unpaid, paid, on hold, and your 
and your cash payments. And again, it's really nice because you can look and see the totals right at the bottom. Um, and that's something that I love. Um, and then you can also, of course, go ahead and charge, um, put charges on hold and charge bookings. And again, because this is a test account, I don't actually have credit cards in here. Um, but what would happen would be you would pull up a, um, this screen and it would tell you the last four digits of their charge account. But then also it would allow you to either charge the full amount or you could enter an amount you want to charge if you don't want to charge the full amount and you can go ahead and charge that. Um, so that, it, I could also show you chat. I'll show you chat really quickly. Um, again, this is real-time chat. You click that. It tells you how many people are in the chat. You can send them messages. Um, and then same with group chat. You can create a group. You can create the name. So this would be team chat. Oops, sorry. Team chat. And then you can add your group members. And the group members all right here you can add them and then you can save your group and then you have your team chat right here and you can send the message to the three members of your team chat um, so that is the um, admin app and there, there are a ton of features and we do have a um, we do have a um, Sorry, I'm, I live in New York City, so it's loud. We do have um, videos on, on our mobile app playlist. Um, so you'll be able to find all those on YouTube. And we're constantly adding more, as well as we're creating a guide that will be sent out after this, um, after this webinar. Um, so I quickly want to show you the team app as well, so you can kind of see how that works and what your team will see. Um, so this is a team app. Again, it's very similar in looks to um, how your um, uh, how your admin app will, will look, um, but it has a few different things. Um, they have their next appointment there, so you can see, okay, my next appointment's at 10 p.m., and this is the location. Um, it shows them that they have five bookings for the day. It shows them how many hours that they've worked this week. Um, they, they can also click that and go to time logs. Um, if you have the ability to, in your Launch 27 web app, if you give your teams the availability to set their own schedule, um, they'll be able to click this and they will be able to let you know what days they want off. So I could click request day off. Um, and it tells me, okay, I have zero bookings. Um, do you want to still request those days off? So it might say, um, you have three bookings. You still want to request those days off. And that just lets you know that you have some appointments that either may need to be covered or you can't request off. And you click OK, and the request is sent to the admin. So you'll see a push notification shortly come in saying, um, Dara King has requested these days off. And then also, you get those that in the email that you normally get in from Launch 27 as well. Um, so that's availability. And again, if you have that set up on the web app, they'll be able to set their availability. Um, messages. You can send messages, uh, like I said, real time. Um, all the contacts are right here. And if I don't have team to team chat, I'll only see admin. If I have team to team chat, I'll see admin and teams. And you know, it's really up to you whether, uh, as you can see, my alert came in requesting the following days off. Um, but as you can, it's up to you if you want your teams to be able to chat. I don't mind my teams being able to chat because maybe they need help with an appointment or maybe they need to cover an appointment. Um, so I allow them to chat, but you can all, all only have them chat with admin if, if that's preferable to you. Um, invitations, if you use invitations, you'll, they'll pop up there. So again, like I said, I have contractors and, you know, if when I send my contractors an invitation, that they'll get a notification that pops up here saying, you have an, you have an invitation, check it out, um, see if you want that job. Settings, um, again, very similar to the admin app, but something that's really cool is if you click preferences, um, you can change the language. And this is really helpful because we have a lot of people um, who speak Spanish, for example. Um, if you click here, we have US English, UK English, we have French because we have a ton of Launch 27 customers in Canada. Um, Spanish, of course, because in the United States we have a lot of Spanish speaking people, and then we also have Dutch. Um, so these are a number of languages that you can, you know, if you click, for example, I can click Spanish. I can go back to my Launch 27 account. I actually have to shut it down for it to remember. 
um, when I open it up, everything's in Spanish for me. Um, and that just helps if you have cleaners that may not be as comfortable with, you know, speaking English or just, you know, want to see it in a language that they speak. Um, we're also in 2018 adding Polish um, because we have a lot of people in the UK that um, speak Polish. So let me change this back to English because my Spanish is not that great. Over. All right, so it's back to English. Now, if I look at my schedule, and this is what your team's going to see. Um, for example, I have a job. Let's say I click on this job in New York. Um, I can, because I have call um, masking enabled, I can click call, and you'll see what happens is it just shows you um, basically that I'm calling this customer, and it doesn't show me the phone number. And I can hang that up. Um, if I want to request a reschedule, and this is one of the um, this is one of the um, features that I, I love. So, say for example, um, a customer isn't home, and my team needs to alert me that an appointment needs to be rescheduled. Um, they can let me know the date it needs to be rescheduled, and I'll get a push notification. Reason for reschedule: customer didn't answer the phone. And so, it's just something that I'll have in my um, in my in my admin app saying okay I gotta reschedule this appointment it's just another reminder um, and then you can get directions which is super helpful and I'll show you more of that when I check into my appointment now when they check into their appointment it's gonna say I'm on my way maybe they forgot to click I'm on my way and they just they arrived at the appointment they want to check in and start working but what I'll do is I'll click I'm on my way and my, it's, it's going to say distance and time cannot be estimated because it's not an actual location. But if you have an actual location, you're going to see the distance to the destination. Um, and you can switch it to kilometers if you want um, or miles if you prefer. And it will give you your estimated time of, of arrival. Again, my appointment was a fake address, so it's not giving me that. But um, it would give you that if it was a real address. If your team needs directions, they can click I need directions. Um, and it will pull up whatever um, my Google Maps is crashing, but Google Maps, okay. So it'll pull up whatever location. And again, like I said, it's not a real address, so it's giving me um, a weird address because it was just a fake location. But I can pull up my address and I can get directions straight from Google Map. And then once I've arrived, um, I can click I've arrived. I can confirm my amount of time that I that I was traveling. And again, because I didn't travel anywhere, it's going to ask me to confirm. And then I check in. And once I've checked in, it's going to start my timer automatically. And I can go to checklists. We didn't assign any checklists for this appointment, but had I signed a checklist, I would see my checklist there. Um, I can go and add picture. And it will ask to access the camera. If they click OK, they'll be able to add pictures. And I will click OK. I'm just going to take a picture for you quickly. And then I can put in details about the picture. Oh, one second. Sorry, I'm plugging my phone. Also, one of the things that we recently added is once you're checked into an appointment, you only see that appointment so that you don't get confused as to where you check in. Um, but if I wanted to add a job picture again, I would click Add Pictures, um, and I would do, and I would go ahead and go through that. Um, and then if I wanted to see a summary of the appointment, I could see one bedroom, one bathroom. Um, will you be home for the service? Uh, where will we find the key under the mat and all of that information. Now, once the job is, as you can see, I'm also logged into the admin account, so it gives the admin um, a notification that I've checked in. And then once I'm done, I can click Complete Job. And I'll click complete, complete Job. And once you've completed the job, it will check you out. And as you can see, I'm marked Checked Out. And again, I'll get a push notification as an admin that I've checked out. Um, the job will show up on my logs, as well as show up in the admin app. And I just got a notification. And it will update shortly that I've checked out of the appointment. Right now it has me checked in. Oh, just updated. And now it has me checked out here. So you can see all that information. You can see where I've checked in, where I've checked out. 
again, it was a fake appointment. So you can see the appointment dot here, but because I wasn't actually at a real appointment, it's not going to give me the real address, but it shows how much time I've logged. And another interesting feature is say I, lo I logged one minute, which obviously it doesn't take you one minute to clean a house. So it flagged that log, turned it red, and then if you go to logs, you'll see here um, that it's flagged it and says, okay, you need to take a look at that log because, um, you know, the, you, it, there's something wrong with it. So anytime uh, a job has gone over time or a job has gone under time or a team has checked in um, within your uh, maybe a team checked out two miles away from the actual job, it will flag that in your time log so that you can look at that and, and question your team and find out, you know, why um, why the, the log doesn't look accurate. Um, so yeah, that is a quick overview, a quick demo. I know we went through it really quickly, but I can answer any questions that you guys have. I'm going to go back through um, um, someone ask if they can add multiple checklists to an appointment. Um, right now you can't, but we can look into giving the ability to add multiple chat, chat lists. Um, does it do call recording? Currently it does not do call recording, but that is one thing we are looking into because I know that that is important. Again, we use a third party calling service because, you know, that's just, um, you know, it's just what's feasible. So they, um, they are, kind of in control of what, um, whether we can do call recording or not. So we're working with them right now. Um, what happens if the customer misses a call and tries to call the number back? So it will tell them that, um, again, similar to Uber and Handy, that, um, you know, that they have, that the call cannot be connected. So what we always advise our team to do is just to, to give them a call back or to let us know that they were unable to reach them. Um, is there test, text masking? Not currently, but that is one of the features that we are looking into adding. Um, what circumstances would you allow your teams to check in further away than one fourth a mile, et cetera? Um, so I don't, um, well, for me, I actually don't have it, um, I don't have it so that they can check in further. Um, because I usually am checking the map to see where they've checked in if something looks suspicious. Um, but you, for our test account, I only have it as always allow because I'm not, you know, a lot of these addresses are not actual addresses because they're not actual appointments. But for you, you know, if you want to ensure that they are only checking in, you know, within a certain distance, I would just, I would definitely suggest using that feature. Um, can you support staff messages, message customers through the app? Yes, so staff can message customers through the app as long as they have it. Um, and someone's asking if there's updates. There's a lot of updates. Um, and I can, you know, reach out to you further um, to make sure that everything that you're experiencing has been updated. Is there a way to automatically invite multiple teams when a job comes and have it where the first, so not currently, um, but that is, I, that would, you know, once the web app gives the ability to do that, then the multiple, then the mobile app would as well. Um, does, the app, does the app ask the team if they're running late or do they have to push the button themselves? So if they're not checked in um, within certain frame, time frames, like if you just saw on my screen, it says you have a booking coming up in 56 minutes. So your teams will get those push notifications. It'll say you have a booking coming up in 15 minutes. <clears throat> and then if they have not um, clicked checked in, I will get a notification that says, you know, a booking is supposed to start now and no team is checked in, or a booking is 15 minutes late with no team checked in. They also get those same notifications. Um, and it will, and they can then be, um, you know, they will then be asked to if they're running late or not. So they get those note of push notifications saying you have a booking coming up, and it just reminds them that they need to either be on their way there or they need to let you know why they're not on their way there. Are multiple teams allowed to get notifications for jobs they can accept or reject? Yes, so you can invite as many teams as you want, um, and then you can assign it to 
whomever you want. You on the mobile app um, and on and on the web app, you'll see who has accepted, and um, you could assign it based on who's accepted, or you can assign it to whomever. Can this be automated versus manually inviting and assigning? Not, not quite yet. Um, can you access the web messages through? Can you access the messages through the web web? Not yet, but checklists, notifications, messages are all things that we are looking into adding in in 2018. Because we know a lot of us, you know, are tied to our computers as well. You know, while, when we're not out in the field, um, so that is something that we're integrating now. Currently, time logs can be accessed. Um, and so that's the, the first biggest step. All right, so we've been going for about an hour. Um, if you have any final questions, um, please feel free to reach out um, to mobile at launch27.com. If you want to get started with your white label app, and again, at that special pricing, um, again, reach out to us at mobile at launch27.com. We will send you um, the form to fill out and then our designer will reach out to you and will work with you to create your um, your custom app um, and then also if you have any other questions or any um, any questions or any other suggestions um, feel free to send those to us and, and we can help you out um, someone asked this is a final question someone asked uh, what if the team shows up, client didn't cancel, and not at home? How would you handle that? Um, typically, what happens for us is the team shows up, they'll call the client with call masking. Um, if the client didn't cancel and they're not at the home, and there's no way to get in the home, they look at the notes, they don't see if the key's going to be there, the doors are locked. Um, what they will typically do is um, they will um, send me a message in the app, I'll respond to the message, I'll reach out to the client again if they can't reach them uh, via the phone, and um, we handle it that way. You know, there's really nothing you can do at that point. We usually charge them a fee unless there's some crazy extenuating circumstance, um, and that's pretty much how we handle that. All right, so one last question. When will the replay be available? Um, the replay will be available, hopefully. I usually try to get it out within 48 to 72 hours, um, just because I have to get everything ready for you guys. Um, I'm going to be putting some guides out as well, um, so I want to make sure those are available. So as soon as those are available, I will send the replay out. And then including the deal on the white label, so that is until December 31st, um, 2017. So feel free to take advantage of that um, in the month of December. And again, any questions, just send those to mobile at uh, launch27.com and we will answer them. You can also ask questions in Intercom as well. Um, you can ask them from your mobile app or from the web app and we will answer those. All right, thank you for sticking with me, um, and thank you for attending. Um, if you're listening to the recording, um, just again, feel free to reach out and ask those questions, and everybody who's here live, thank you. Um, we will talk to you soon, and we'll have the next webinar coming out probably in about three weeks. All right, happy December. Bye.